Hello, uh, I'm John Dixon. I'm a medical writer and trainer in scientific writing for Libra Communications Training, and I'd like to thank Peter Llewellyn for the opportunity to speak today. Like many, many medical writers, I'm a scientist, and scientists like measuring things. So today I'd like to share with you uh, my interest in readability tools and how these may be useful for medical writers as they develop or refine their skills in writing and editing, particularly in biomedical text. But I'm not here to sell such tools as the answer to all medical writers' editing problems. They don't convert bad science into good science, and there's certainly no substitute for the traditional editing skills of a good writer. If you do decide after today that readability tools are not for you, uh, then I still hope that even spending a little time considering readability from the angle this presentation takes may be of some interest or even use. So how do we define readability? Well, there have been many definitions coined over the years, but uh, let's take three. The extent to which readers understand text, read it as an optimum speed and find it interesting. Or the ease of comprehension due to the style of writing, and we'll come on to style uh, very soon. Or simply the ease of reading words and sentences. Why is readability important? Well, early research on readability showed that newspapers sell better uh, when their articles are more readable. But for the medical writer, delivering readable text means that your writing will have greater impact, uh, will be more easily understood, and hopefully will help to increase the chance that articles are published. Way back in 1935, Gray and Leary tested 800 adults. Uh, this is a large study, possibly the largest of its kind uh, ever uh, undertaken. Uh, tested adults for reading materials such as books, magazines and newspapers. And they identified four major elements that affect readability. And in order of uh, decreasing relative influence on readability, these were content, style, format and organisation. So what do these mean? Well, content uh, refers to the, the, the difficult concepts or the difficulty of concepts, uh, the grouping of ideas, the flow of ideas within a document. Style refers to the sentences and the vocabulary, how difficult are the sentences, uh, how difficult are the words that we're reading. Design refers to the appearance, so fonts, typography, columns, lines, white space, illustrations. And organisation refers to the way a document's organised into sections, chapters, headings and paragraphs. Now, Gray and Leary couldn't statistically measure content, design and organisation, but they were able to measure sentence difficulty. For instance, the number of words per sentence or uh, word difficulty, word length or the number of syllables per word. And so here are two formulas that uh, have been developed, many formulas have been developed since their research, but here are a couple of the, the most widely known and widely used. Uh, the flesh reading ease, which we'll call reading ease, and the flesh kincaid grade level, which we'll call the educational grade level. So that's the grade level at which you'd probably be expected to need to be to understand a piece of text. Both of these formulae measure average words per sentence and average syllables per word. Importantly, these formulae are used by Microsoft Word and other uh, tools to provide readability statistics. So what does the formula look like? Well, in 1948, Rudolf Fletch, Flesch uh, uh, did, uh, came up with this formula. It's complicated. Many of the formulas are complicated, so maybe we shouldn't dwell on the formulas, but uh, con uh, consider their usefulness and, and what they mean. So to show readability statistics for a document in Microsoft Word, you need to make sure that the spelling and grammar in the spelling and uh, grammar options section show readability statistics box is checked. Everybody has the check grammar and spelling box, but not the other box which shows the readability statistics. So when you then go on to perform a spelling and grammar check on a document in Word, at the end of the check you'll find that you see a box called readability statistics. Within this box, you'll be told the average number of words per sentence in the document, you'll be given the results of the reading ease and grade level formulas, and you'll also be given the proportion of sentences in the passive construct. Actually, in Microsoft Word, you do need to tell Word, or in the settings again, to watch out for uh, instances of use of the passive voice. But as long as you check that box, that's another statistic that you'll see. So let's consider these two formulas. Um, 
these two formulas give results effectively in opposite directions. So the reading is formula gives an output on a piece of text of from around about 100 down to zero. So if it scores text at between 90 and 100, that's very easy reading. If it scores text at between 0 and 29, well, that's very difficult reading. The grade level works in the opposite direction. So a grade five would be very easy text, educational grade five, and a grade of over 16 would be very difficult text. So here's a table of the outputs of these two formulas against different levels of reading difficulty, educational institution, typical reading material at that level, and sentence length. Uh, so we can see that very easy reading, uh, the flesh score would be uh, around about 90 to 100, the grade level of grade 5, uh, equivalent to being at elementary school, the typical sort of uh, writing would be seen in comics with very small sentences around about nine words or less. The recommended grade level for patient education is about sixth grade. So this is again equivalent to later on in elementary school, the sort of text that you read in Pulp Fiction, slightly longer sentences. Average adult reading grade is about ninth grade, uh, plain English. Uh, high school level, the sort of text that you'd be reading in Reader's Digest or The Sun, um, again slightly longer sentences, around about 17 words per sentence. We need to remember that formulas simply count words and the length of words, number of syllables in words. Formulas ignore grammatical issues. So if you take a simple sentence like the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, nine words, then uh, Microsoft Word will score this uh, as with a reading ease of, of 94, a grade level of two, very easy reading. But if you take the same nine words, starting with a capital letter and a full stop, in other words, in a sentence, jumps the quick brown fox over dog the lazy, then Microsoft Word's going to score that sentence in exactly the same way, but it doesn't mean anything. So we need to be very careful about what formulas actually measure. So what about readability of biomedical journals? Well, readability formulas weren't primarily developed to measure readability of scientific research articles. So we need to appreciate what biomedical research articles score when we're using readability formulas. And reviewing the literature, and many uh, biomedical journals have been reviewed, we find that the reading A's is, is, is low, it's between 15 and around about 30, and the grade level, well, it's, it's 16 and above. So on the table that we looked at before, this is very difficult reading. Uh, uh, and interestingly, the length of sentences that are used in biomedical journals are generally really quite long, an average of 29 and above, so much longer sentences. In 2006, Hall uh, uh, was talking about readability and specifically in relation to biomedical journals. And he gave us some uh, useful advice. He said that original articles published in surgical journals contain too many long sentences and complex words. Readability indices are useful tools because they promote the use of simple English. It's realistic for authors to aim for flesh scores, that's the reading ease score, above 30 when creating manuscripts. I think that's a bit optimistic, but nevertheless, it's a good benchmark from which to work. Remember that formulas count everything. And so when we're talking about research articles, uh, for instance, if you take an author date citation, Smith & Jones 2017, there are four words, and that would add four words to the length of a sentence. And formulas also count text and numbers in tables, graphs, and reference lists, numbers in body text, statistics, and equations. So if you're going to use the formulas in biomedical articles, you actually need to remove these elements and just look at the readability of the raw text to get a real idea of readability. We'll come on to that again in a little. Back to the four major elements of readability. Um, these four elements we could call writer factors. These elements are all in the control of the writer, whether it's content, style, design, and organization. But we also have to consider the reader. And if we have a reader who has a prior knowledge of the subject, who's a very skillful reader, uh, has a great interest in a subject and highly motivated to read a particular article, then obviously that, that, uh, that article is going to be much easier for him or her to read than somebody who, who doesn't have these characteristics. And it's important that, that we realise, of course, that scientific researchers use highly specialised and highly technical vocabulary. They use long words. They have to use long words. 
And specialised technical vocabulary might artificially increase the number of so-called hard words. So maybe with complex uh, documents like scientific research articles, we should be considering more word familiarity rather than word length as being something which is difficult for people to, to read. So when we're editing biomedical text, it's reasonable certainly to simplify particularly long sentences and long, difficult, non-technical words, but there's not much we can do about the long technical words that we need to edit. OK, so formulas. What are the advantages of using formula-derived statistics from these formulas? Well, it, they give an objective and quantifiable measure of style. They give rapid results. They can predict comprehension and inclination to read on. You don't need the reader to actually give you an assessment of the article. They can help writers improve the simplicity of text, so they can be used as a warning tool for screening text. The disadvantages, some of which we've covered, they can't measure the quality of grammar. They can't measure content format and organisation. They can't measure the reader factors we talked about. And they can't actually measure audience understanding. We can only predict what it's likely to be. And certainly writing to the formula, just writing a piece of text or editing it to try and improve a score may not actually improve the readability. There are many other factors which are dictating readability. And there are a lot of formulas, and all the formulas vary in the measures that they produce. So let's go on to online readability tools. What are they? What do they do? They use these formulas and many other formulas, and they will probably calculate the scores from a number of formulas and then give you an average readability score. But where the online tools come into the greatest use is in providing a highly visual analysis of text. So they will actually highlight so that easy to find long and difficult sentences, long difficult words, words that can be simplified, use of the passive voice and adverbs. And actually it's use of the passive voice and adverbs, these are two things that, that are usually uh, attributed to slightly more difficult text to read if everything is written in the passive voice or if you use a lot of adverbs. Let's take one of these tools called the Hemingway Editor. Uh, if we put some simple text into the Hemingway Editor, which anybody can access online, um, then uh, this, this particular piece of text is scored grade 9, which is easy to read. Um, most of the text here is in white, which means it's readable, it's easily readable. But this, this tool highlights sentences which are difficult to read in yellow and very difficult to read in red. It also highlights instances of the passive voice, in green here, uh, adverbs in blue, uh, and words which could have simpler forms in purple, in pink. If you put the same text into another tool called readable.io, similar in, in many ways, this is a, a, a very an interesting tool with a lot of other statistics behind it. Um, very interesting to look at the, the, the statistics that it produces. But this particular tool scores the same piece of text as grade B. It scores on the grade of A, very simple, to E, very difficult to read, so grade B. Again, you can see the highlighting of certain sentences which are difficult to read and, and other elements that we've, we've mentioned. Okay, so let's say we've got some unedited text that we're producing for a client. It's in Microsoft Word, and we know that we can uh, do a spelling and grammar check and produce some readability statistics. Now, in this particular piece of text, well, we've got average words per sentence of 40. These are long, long sentences. Reading ease of less than 10, grade level of over 20. This is hard going, this text. Uh, and a passive number of sentences is 80%. Ouch. If we put this text into the Hemingway editor, it's all gone red. Uh, and numerous uses of the passive voice and, and adverbs. And the readability uh, score here, it's, it's, it's postgraduate, it's labelled postgraduate. Put the same text into the uh, readability.io tool, again rating E, that's the hardest on this scale. And again you can see these same elements are highlighted, so something needs to be done with this text, probably to simplify it and make it a little bit more readable. So we can use readability st statistics and tools to screen any text that you've written. So yes, biomedical research articles, patient education material, for which it's actually used quite often uh, by um, some medical communications agencies, training material, website text, blogs. 
Remember we need to remove author date citations, tables, graphs, reference lists and equations when we're talking about biomedical texts or complex text. We need to be looking at the raw text. Now it's a bit of a pain to have to remove these things. I'm not suggesting that every article that's ever written is screened, but it's very interesting uh, at the very least for writers to have a look at the way they write, have a look at their own style uh, and, and see what, what sort of scores are they are coming up with. Because as I say, the process of just thinking through how readable your text is, is I think is useful. So in Microsoft Word, here are some thresholds for uh, concern. The reading ease, uh, well if the reading ease is less than 20 or the grade level of greater than 16, this suggests that readability of text could be improved. If the average number of words per sentence is 30 or over, well maybe some sentences are too long and they should be split in two. If your passive voice count of sentences is over 40%, it may be that you consider rewriting some sentences in the active voice. Putting the text into the readability tools, well, we've seen these highlight difficult sentences and they make them easy to locate in a document. Um, long words are highlighted, uh, instances of the passive voice and adverbs. So in conclusion, readability formulas usually measure average sentence length and word difficulty. Other tools can identify long sentences, long words, difficult words, use of the passive voice and adverbs and a number of other uh, statistics are provided. So we can use readability tools to screen biomedical research articles and indeed any other written material to help editors improve readability. But we need to use other well-documented advice uh, to help improve readability. And so my last slide is a list of very useful resources uh, about how to write readable text. Um, uh, one or two particularly good articles found in European Medical Writers Association journal called Medical Writing. So I hope I provoked some interest in readability tools and thank you for listening. <laughs>